Bro, you done turned down 20 million, bro. 20 million. You done turned down 20 million. Guaranteed. 20 million, bro. 20 million guaranteed. Are you serious, bro? We already ready to go to 40, bro. Hey, Ringsires, what's going on? This is your host, Boxing's Objective Observer, and welcome back to Ringsire Stories. Or if you're new, we make content regarding boxing through mini documentaries, backstories, and much more. So if you enjoy that type of content, feel free to subscribe, thumbs up, and hit that notification bell for the latest here on Ringside Stories. Thanks so much for your support and welcome to the channel. Devin the Dream Haney sits on top of the world. He became the first undisputed 135 pound champion of the world in the four bell era, defending all of his crowns against the highly regarded Vasil Lomachenko and just picked up another WBC world title in his second weight division, that being the 140 pound division. Talks about who is next and what is surprising to me personally is that most people want to see the dream take on Gervonta Tank Davis next. I'm wondering how interested you are in pursuing an undisputed fight with him and what message do you have for Haney? Uh, don't really want to speak on it. This is my moment. No, but Tank got a belt though. He do. He got the regular belt though. What's, what's that? Let him know what it is. What, what he got? You know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> he funny as shit. They gonna get it on. He funny as shit. It seems to be quite a bit of bad blood. That's why I came in and messaged him just to try and get a little bit of, you know, I'm not really in the, the circle of butting heads at the moment with all those guys, but there is a huge amount of money for Javonta Davis for that fight. So I just wanted to let him know. But unfortunately, he didn't want to know about it. Let's be honest. Who really wants to fight Devin Haney? You know, I mean, that's why, you know, these sort of numbers of 20 million and stuff like that, if that's not going to dangle a carrot, you know, and everyone tries to put Devin Haney down. You get this shit stuff from people like Leonard Ellaby saying the fight did 50,000 buys. It ain't even worth responding to. But they want to set a narrative to try and dress it up that actually Devin hasn't got any value. He doesn't really, uh, you know, he doesn't sell pay-per-views, he doesn't sell tickets. Then all of a sudden he sells out the Chase Centre and they say, yeah, but tickets are only 60 bucks up the top. Like, you know, you should be embracing fights like that, not trying to put people down and talk yourself out of it. So, disappointing that Javonte didn't want to talk about the fight. But, but my guy's just the best. Again, Gavin can fight his ass off. But Tank is just the best. And he's going to prove it. He, he's going to prove it. And this is just another step towards that. They're going to fight. They're going to they're fight whether it's... Say it again. They're yeah, gonna they're going to fight. It's, that's inevitable. It's just when it's going to happen. Tank versus Haney, uh, wow, great fight. I, I would have to, uh, I would have to pick, uh, I would have to pick Tank. I would have to pick Tank. Tank. I think, I think Haney, but, but then again, Haney learned a lot from this, from this fight with Loma. But Tank is a, Tank is a beast. I got Devin Haney all day, all day, man. He, he he's going to box. He's not going to be there for Tank. Tank is a much smaller man in terms of his height and dimensions. He would have to be coming up from 35 to 40. Hey, Devin Haney, we'd 165 in the ring with program. I'd love to see Haney and Tank. I know he went That's up away. That's what I was going to ask you about next. Yeah. What do you think there? What's the breakdown? I don't think anyone beats Tank Davis. I, I think that much for Tank Davis. Maybe not outside the ring. I hope he's getting better in that area, quite frankly. But in the ring, I don't, I don't think any of these guys beat Tank. I think he's that good. Tank throws away constant rounds, lets you outbox him easily. Then he waits for you to make a mistake. He tries to lure you in and knocks you out. Haney doesn't make those kind of mistakes. Haney fights in a very athletic style, but very safety first, especially against guys who are going to be punchers like this. He'll, he'll take what you give him. He'll create the simplicity. He'll just keep doing that to Tank over and over and over again. He'll never fall in for that mistake, and he'll win constant rounds. Devin Haney and Tank. Oh, yeah. Tank gonna knock Devin out for sure. We seen it tonight with Lomachenko, a old Lomachenko. And we seen Tia Fibo beat Lomachenko so easy so that this shit didn't even make no sense. So Tank gonna knock Devin ass out all the way. 
Now me personally, I'm not really sold on Gervonta Tank Davis yet. Yes, he is a talent. Yes, he is explosive. Yes, he has abilities. But in my opinion, he hasn't really fought the top of the division, any division that he has fought yet. And he hasn't fought anyone notable, really, certainly not in recent memory. But it is an interesting fight between the pure boxer who is regarded for his boxing skill, greatly technical, good footwork, head speed and defense in Devin Haney, who stands out with his ring IQ, who can adapt, and at just 25, not only has shown superb ring generalship so far, but is far from a finished article. Devin Haney's weakness, however, remains his power, even though in his last fight against Regis Progre, Devin Haney did show some power, and many people argue that that is because of the weight cut that is not as stringent as it was when Haney was fighting at the 135 pound limit. And as Haney's last opponent mentioned, his power did surprise me, not gonna lie. I thought he was a soft puncher. You know, he, he does have power. It's not like, um, like a like a one punch type of shot, but he's quick, and it's the it's the shots that you don't see. And that's the kind of power he has. So Haney doesn't have a one punch knockout type of punch. Also, Devin Haney has shown in the past that he can get hurt, and that he has far from a granite chin. Devin Haney's most notable wins are his two lopsided victories over former unified lightweight world titleist George Cambosis Jr., who Haney beat back to back on Cambosis Jr.'s home turf of Australia, a win over the highly esteemed Vasil Lomachenko, although many still dispute the win, knowing that Vasil Lomachenko is past his best, a bit older, and certainly not the biggest as Lomachenko came up from lower weight classes, but a good win nonetheless. And most recently, Devin the Dream Haney beat two-time world champion Regis Progre in a complete shutout, which was Haney's debut in the 140-pound division, picking up the WBC world title, making Haney a two-weight world champion. Gervonta Tank Davis's strength is his athleticism. He is dynamic with explosive power in both hands, especially in his left hook. He's an excellent combination puncher when he sits down on his shots. When he has his man hurt, he knows how to finish fights. Gervonta Davis' weaknesses though is that he's inconsistent with his jab at times. He can get lackadaisical if the opponent doesn't engage. And his gas tank is still a bit of a question mark, especially when he is in there with a fighter who brings the heat. And that was a bit exposed in the fight with Isaac Cruz back in 2021. Gervonta Tank Davis is coming off of his career best pay-per-view event, a vicious TKO of the rising unbeaten quote-unquote star Ryan Garcia. However, it must be said Ryan Garcia hasn't proven himself to be a commodity in boxing in terms of boxing talent. And if you take a look at Gervonta Tank Davis's resume, yeah, he has held world championships in three different weight divisions. However, two of those weight divisions were kind of questionable because Tank Davis held the WBA regular world title in, for example, the 140 pound division, the regular title, which is a minor title. The matchup between the skilled undefeated Devin Haney versus the athletic heavy-handed counterpuncher in Gervonta Tank Davis does have potential and they have some history together as a young Devin Haney on the come up did spar Gervonta Tank Davis. Y'all know what happened, man. I, I don't he know. He sparred uh, Devin, right? And uh, You was there? Yeah, yeah, I was there. And uh, he sparred in about billion shirt. Gervonta? Yeah. He got right off the plane. Hey, like I don't even talk about. I caught him in the in the spawn match and almost knocked him out. Like, and uh, we went to the gym. It's packed. It's hot. He hit him. Boom. Then he hit him again. And he uh, like went out. I jumped in the ring because at the time Devin is seventeen. Adrian jumped in the ring and like, no, it's over. Yeah. And everybody was just about to fight. Yeah. I caught him and I'm like, hell no, nah, this is a kid. Hell no, nah, it's gonna it's gonna fall it's gonna fall on us. If you know what I mean, if if he really get up like that, so this is an intriguing matchup between two undefeated fighters in and around the same weight divisions, 
in and around their prime. It must be said that Devin Haney at 25, although he has accomplished a lot, is far from a finished article and could still be a great matchup for Gervonta Tank Davis, even an exciting one. But let me know, Ringsiders, what you think would happen if Gervonta Tank Davis would face Devin the Dream Haney next. If you like more content like this and you haven't already, feel free to subscribe, thumbs up, and hit that notification bell. It helps the channel out a lot, i.e. inspires me to continue to create more quality content for y'all. If you've done that already, you're amazing. We already know that. You are the true undisputed world champion. Till next time, Ringsiders, this is your host, Boxing's Objective Observer with Ringside Stories. Thanks for watching and have a legend day. Every day.